today I'm going to be talking about cultural synergies and the opportunities that they present. Um, as I was introduced, I'm Sam Motre, um, I'm an actor, entertainer, philanthropist, all of that. But I think the one I love the most is being everybody's friend. I think that is that one accolade that I really love. And it is my job, and I thoroughly enjoy it to put smiles on the faces of people on TV and everywhere I go. So within this presentation, or even towards the end, if you crack a little smile, it means I've done my job well. But if you don't, it means I've failed my job. So I beg you, please, if you find something that's remotely funny, crack a smile. All right, I want to take it back. 16 years ago, I remember I was part of the cadet corps a school, for a small group of guys and girls who trained military style. And we had a very, very famous comedian come talk to us. Uh, he's called Kweku Sintim Misa. I'm sure my Ghanaians uh, know of him. Or we affectionately call him KSM. He came to give us a pep talk at school. And he said a lot of things. And out of everything that he said, the one thing that struck me the most was the word perseverance. Now, as a 14-year-old, that was the first time I heard that word. It was a big word to me. I said, wow, that's a huge word. But he explained further. And he spoke about the importance of having passion for your goals, and your dreams, and never giving up no matter what came your way. Now, to be frank and honest, I didn't really understand what he said, because as a 14-year-old, I hadn't really faced any real challenges at that time. But five years on, this word perseverance would be my guiding motto as I set on this journey to Korea. Very uncertain journey to have my bachelor's in computer science and engineering. Some people get shocked when they hear it. A lot of Koreans, they get shocked. They can't believe it. They're like, oh, you study computers, but you're on TV. And I tell them, well, life doesn't always go the way you plan it. Life is pretty funny. But I'm still glad where I ended up. So it was through the government scholarship program that I came to Korea. And the reason why I say it's an uncertain journey was because I was riddled with a lot of what ifs and a lot of questions. And I'm sure every foreigner in this room, at least at one point in time before you came to Korea, you probably asked yourself a whole bunch of questions. What kind of food do they eat there? What language do they speak? What is the culture? How are people going to perceive me? Are people going to accept me for who I am? These are legitimate questions that you ask yourself. And sometimes when you come here, you still find yourself asking these questions because sometimes you never even get over that cultural shock. So these are questions that I ask myself. But at the end of the day, I was determined to ride the tide and persevere no matter what. I don't know about you guys, but coming from where I'm coming from, you can't leave and come back the same. You have to succeed at whatever it is that you do. And I was determined to do exactly that. And living in Korea, when I first came, there weren't too many foreigners. Korea is a homogeneous society. It wasn't very easy. You had to go to very specific places to meet foreigners. And as an African, as a person of color, it meant that I had to go the extra mile. It was almost as if you had to prove yourself to people everywhere that you went. And that was the same for me even going into the entertainment industry. It was something that I carefully planned and calculated to do. Because every time I spoke to my Korean friends, I'd often ask them, what makes you so afraid of me? Why do you think I live in a hut somewhere that I run with lions and elephants? I told them, I had to go to the zoo to see a lion. I've never seen a lion in my entire life. So I asked them, what informed your ideas of me? All these prejudices. And they said, well, the truth is that we don't have any real contact with people um, from where you're from, so we watch TV, and this is what TV informs us. It's like, ah, 
TV is a very important tool. I'm going to plunge into that. Now, speaking of TV, it takes me way back when I was really, really young. Now, I remember my grandfather, a very, very important person to me in my life. He's taught me so many things. When we wanted to watch cartoons, my grandfather never agreed. He always wanted us to watch culturally centric programs or culture centered programs like Oktoberfest in Germany or sumo wrestling in Japan or traditional festivals in China. And the truth is that being that young, I didn't really see the importance of that. I just wanted to watch cartoons and just have fun. But every time we did that, my grandfather would come and reward us with cookies and give us delicious you know, orange juices, like, yeah, you're doing a good job. Little did we know that subconsciously it was helping us to be more open-minded and to understand that there are very different cultures besides those that we know. Now, down the line, here I am, working in the entertainment industry. My main job is to connect two cultures, and I do not take that for granted at all, honestly. Um, I think it's, it's a great recognition, and that is some of the things that you enjoy from cultural synergy, to be able to connect these two cultures and opportunities that come with it. Now, when David, the comedian, he was talking about his mom being proud, it was the same thing. Now, when you type on your phone, the most famous black man in Korea, my face pops up. And my mom would intentionally go to her friends and say, do you know Korea? Not really. She shows them where Korea is. Do you know who the most famous black man in Korea is? They say, no, my son. And she shows them a picture of me. You know, she's very, very proud. And um, it makes me proud as well. You know, and um, these little things, they really come to tell me that, you know, the job is going well, but there's still a lot of things to do. And within the course of living here, of course, so many experiences, but of course, so many ideas that have shaped me to be who I am. And I'm going to share these ideas with you, structured in the number 572. If you're not familiar with what it is, I'll break it down. So 572 is basically my name, numeralized in Korean. Five is for O, seven is for Chil, and two is for E, O Chil E. That's my name, 572. Yeah, Korean's like, oh my God. It's so interesting when you talk about connecting cultures, right? Because when you look at Ghana and Korea on the map, so far apart. So you travel a lot of kilometers to come to Korea. You go to language school. You open your book. You're learning Korean. The first thing you see is Ghana. You're like, what? I came all the way from Ghana to Korea and I'm seeing Ghana. It's like everything is connected. Everything is connected. And then my name. If I want to put Sam, that's three. So 3572, Sam Ochiri. And those are the last four digits of my phone number. I did that on purpose. So I want to break these ideas down. Now, the number five. The five represents the five things that I believe in. The first and foremost is believing in yourself. I believe it's the one thing that nobody can do for you. Who you are is what makes you unique. I believe that a lot of people have accepted me. They like me because I'm true to who I am. I don't pretend to be somebody else. And believing yourself provides you an opportunity to tell people about where you're from, your culture, and to share things with them. So it's so important to believe in yourself no matter where you go. It's the one thing that nobody can take away from you. The second thing is respecting cultures and ideas. It's important that sometimes when we come to Korea, we often find ourselves projecting things that we know from our, our cultures and always complaining about Korea over and over again. But we need to respect different cultures. The third thing is that you cannot, fight, you cannot fight ignorance with ignorance. You have to fight it through dialogue. That's why when somebody comes at you and you talk to them, they get shocked. And it provides you an opportunity to have a conversation. The fourth one is, don't be afraid to not know. A lot of people want to pride themselves on the fact that they know it all, but you cannot know it all. And in fact, 
When you tell yourself that you do not know it all, that's when you're able to learn and get new information. The last thing that I want to talk about is that you have to continue learning. Life is a non-stop learning process. Nobody gets it all. You have to keep learning and learning. Number seven, talks about the days of the week, Monday through to Sunday. I believe that every day is a new opportunity to meet new people, to get a lot of inspiration, to get new ideas. So make every day count. Two, represents morning and evening, my most important times of the day. Have you guys taken the subway really early in the morning? I have, and not one single soul was smiling because people don't want to go to work. They just want to be in bed and sleep. But how you wake up in the morning really sets the tone for how your day is going to go. If you get up and you're happy and you're positive, when you meet people, you say hi, you greet them, you extend that positivity that comes out of you. In the evening is when I just recount and assess everything that I did in the day, mistakes learned, and it catapults me to make better decisions moving forward. Now, there are a few things that I want you guys to take away from today. The first thing is language. Nelson Mandela once said that if you talk to a man in a language he understands, it goes to his head. But if you talk to a man in his own language, it goes to his heart. Hence, when you meet Koreans and you say, 안녕하세요, they get so excited. Oh, 한국말 진짜 잘하네요. Oh, and all you said was one word. That's how powerful of a tool language is. It's that one thing that when you learn, you never lose it. It's a great skill, and it brings you endless, endless possibilities. So if you're in Korea, even if you're here for one month, two months, six months, one year, I really encourage you to learn the language. It's going to open a whole lot of doors for you that you never knew existed. I would not be here if I didn't speak the language and learn the culture. So please, language, very, very important. The second thing, of course, diversity. I believe that what um, culture does for us is that it allows us to embrace other cultures and not, losing, and not lose our identities. You want to be able to learn about new cultures but not forget who you are and where you came from. It's also about defining our differences, looking for similarities, and above everything else, coming together as a group, I think is so important. And personally, some of the best moments for me have been being a cultural ambassador for different agencies here in Korea. I believe that there's unity and diversity, so we have to embrace that. Don't look at somebody's culture and say, well, this is different from mine, so it's bad. No, the fact that it's different does not mean it's bad. It's just different. Just learn it and move on. Now, impact. I believe that the results of cultural synergy eventually is to create a legacy and leave an impact in your community. Whatever platform you have, whatever opportunity you have, be it big or small, I believe that you can make a little impact. And it's for this reason that I partnered with World Vision to start the 572 School Foundation in Ghana two years ago. We just completed the second school and I believe some of these things are very important in giving the community a sustainable way of creating new leaders for the new generation. Now, before I end my talk, I want you to ponder over some of these questions. Ask yourselves, what do you represent? What is your cultural identity? And rate yourself on a scale of one to 10. How intercultural you are. And when you ask yourself these questions and you answer them, you're gonna find that everything is gonna connect. Even all the speakers who have spoken before me, talking about how to be a dad. I wanna be a great dad like you when I grow up someday and have fun with my kids and create beautiful memories. We often try to find the differences that put us apart, as opposed to the similarities that can keep us together. Once we search more for those things, we we'll realize that we have more in common than we have in differences. And we we'll realize that at the end of the day, whether you're from Ghana, 
you're from Korea, you're from Mongolia, wherever you are, you find out one single thing about you which is human and makes the other person human as well. Thank you guys so much for having me. Appreciate it. <laughs>